An unforgettable Saturday for Kaylee Smiler and BYU women's basketball, to Myla. say the least. A dramatic comeback and with some heroics on Smiler's part. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We are live in Studio B and we have that hero with us in the Cougar Council Room. Kaylee, welcome to BYU Hello, Sports Nation. Good morning. After just a wild weekend for you. Yeah, how was Saturday? Oh, yeah, it was interesting. Did a lot of drama. <laughs> well, let's just recap for uh, those that may not be familiar with this. Okay, so your, your family, in large part, has not had the opportunity to ever collectively watch you play a basketball game in person. Yeah. Correct? correct. Okay. Yeah. So with that backdrop, in the game, you take an elbow to the top of your head. You get your head split open. Yeah. <laughs> You're feeling, I'm sure, just a, cer a certain uh, urge to and, and, and want the doctors to rush to get you back on the floor. So you have eight staples put in your head with no numbing, and then you come in and you score eight points in like a two-minute span, including two huge threes, and you're the hero in the fourth quarter. So, yeah, pretty good weekend. How would you sum up the emotions of all of that as you were going through it? Um, well, before the game, Amber had come to me and asked if I wanted that game to be my senior night because my, my family probably won't make it to my senior night, you know, next year. This is like their one time coming for Christmas break. She's like, do you want it? We can walk out. And I was like, oh, I don't love the attention. I was like, no, it's okay. I'll do it with Lauren Gaston. It'll be fine. But in the back of my head, I was like, oh, you know, this is my family's one game. I'll treat it like it's a senior night, do my best. Of course, when I get injured, only in the second quarter, only been out there for 10 minutes, only scored two points. <laughs> I wasn't, um, what's the word, like hurt. I wasn't thinking about how in pain I was. I was, I was more angry. I was like, are you serious right now? Like 10 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> so, you know, we rushed to the back and the, the doctors are amazing and Jeff is amazing, our trainer. And they're trying to do all these tests. And I was like, I'm good. I'm not concussed. There's four of you, two times two is four. <laughs> like just naming all these things. You're wearing purple. The score is this. <laughs> you're you're the playing, one saying I, it. I'm the one saying it. I know the questions. Here they are. Here. <laughs> you're giving yourself the concussion yeah. protocol test. Yeah. yeah. I'm saying as quick as I can. <laughs> the, the longest part was honestly just changing my uniform because once it split, like all the blood had drained down my neck and shirt and uniform. And we were wearing white. <laughs> of it kind of would have been cool to keep the bloody uni, though. Just like, hey, look what Hang I've it. gone through today. <laughs> yeah. You had to change it. Yeah, so same thing. Like, Kyle, our uniform man, he was onto it. So everyone backstage did an amazing job to get me out quick so that I was back in time for third and fourth quarter. Okay, but the eight staples with no numbing. Yes, let's talk about that. The <laughs> Are you told, like, okay, we need to do eight staples? Do you want numbing or not? Like, what's that process like? I feel, see, I'm not sure what the process was. One, um, it may have hurt a little bit, but, you know, I was still going to play. <laughs> and a little bit, that's just it. Just a little bit, <laughs> yeah. And when we were back there, they put alcohol on it to clean it. So yeah. I knew that they had cleaned it. And I'm no doctor, but they may have put some kind of numbing gel. So that made sense. Because in my head, I was like, maybe they're going to inject me or do something to numb it. Mm. And that's why it hurt less. But yeah, if anyone out there is like a, a doctor or trainer who's watching this and they're like, they probably put numbing gel on her, that's probably what happened. <laughs> Coming out with the truth. Yeah, no, that, that's incredible regardless. Like the fact that you have the eight staples. And you were, you were very emotional in the post-game interview about, hey, I had to get back out there. What, what compelled you to feel like, okay, no matter what, I got to figure this out because it's like the only time everybody's together. It was an obvious choice, it seemed like, but you still had to do it. Right. You had to overcome that pain. You had to overcome that moment. Yes. I mean, I think it's just something I'm brought up with, just generally, like, culture-wise, family-wise, BYU-wise. Um, everyone's told me, you know, you just deal through it, fight through it. I wanted to be out there, and it did feel emotional because, you know, like, I'm still trying to focus. I still had to shoot, like, the free throws at the end. And it was like once the whole game was done, then I could relax. And I'm like looking up to my family, like looking at my mom, like, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's so concerned making my sister go down to the training room and bust through all the doctors being like, where is she? Is she okay? Um, yeah, very emotional game. It, and it would have been enough to just, just get back in yes, there. Just, just get the in bench. the game. But then you come in and Spencer's like, she's unconscious. Like, luckily you weren't after being hit in the head. <laughs> it like, you know, opened up this new space for you or whatever. But you have this incredible performance, career high. What did it mean to have that performance on that day, given the circumstances and the situation? Well, I feel like I had to make the most of that time. And my parents joke about it too after the game. Like, man, we got everything. You know, we got an injury. <laughs> we got a threes. We got the free throws at the end. We got the overtime. <laughs> like, and a win. If they only get one game to watch me, I just shoved everything I possibly could into that it. That was like the best thing ever. Yeah. 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 
Well, let's okay. Let's rewind to the fourth quarter because BYU is down by 13 and things are not looking good. Yeah. So as Jerem said, it's enough for you to get back on the floor and just play in front of your family. But now you are the catalyst for this 18 nothing run or 21 to two or whatever it was. However you want to like bracket that an incredible run to come back and take the lead and push it to overtime. So what's your mentality down 13 with eight minutes to play against a team that on paper you should beat? Right. Um, so the play that we set up for me to get the three that they keep posting online, we've practiced that before, so we were prepared to run that. It was more like, oh, we're running this play. That means the coaches trust me enough to make this shot. And so I respect them a ton. I was like, if they trust me, then I should have confidence in myself to make it. So when I made it, I was like, cool, we're going to be on a run. Also, in overtime, we do like five-minute um, scrimmages at the end of practice every single day. So when it was overtime, we were looking at each other like, oh, this is just an end of practice, like staples, we got it. Oh, the reference that wasn't meant to happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's perfect. Yeah. It's perfect. Hey, staples, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then also shout out to, like, you know, our freshmen, like Kaylee Woolston and Mari Whiting. You know, this is their first time being in an environment like this and the pressure's on. They did an amazing job. And, of course, our, our returners, Gus, and, like, the two of us trying to work together as captains. Emma Calvert's always our... Like, she's the one who did the, the talk at the beginning with the referees that the captains are supposed to. <laughs> she's our unspoken captain as well. So just hopefully me being able to be out there to calm everybody down um, and have that experience hopefully helped. <laughs> What's the biggest difference between uh, this group from last year to this year? Because you're off to a 9-2 and two start. You've got some young guns in the backcourt, like you mentioned. You know, Nani has left the team midseason. You've dealt with the emotions of that and the, the pr lack of production of that. Yet you guys have uh, jumped out to 9-2 and two so far. What has it taken this year? Um, yeah, we were thinking about that, too. Last year, when it came to those close moment times, I feel like we just couldn't make it or the chemistry wasn't there or yeah. the, you know, the extra pass or the, I just feel like the, the belief that we could, if we stay connected towards the end, we don't need like a miracle play or, and we don't need to come up with something ourselves. If we just listen to the people who know what they're supposed to do, then it's supposed to work. And so I, that was amazing to see in the game as well. Like finally got to a pressure moment. We're like, okay, this happened last year as well. Normally last year too, a halftime would be up and then would slowly drag to the end. But I felt like that other game we had switched and we're like, no, just stick, stick to the basics and we'll be good. Kaylee Smiler is with us on BYU Sports Nation. We just mentioned Nani Falatea. Your good friend Ari Mackey Williams has a devastating knee injury that keeps her out for the duration of the season. So between losing Ari and Nani, how is the team adjusting to not having those two key cogs like you thought they would be a few months back? Um, me and Kaylee, for sure, getting more dribbling drills in. <laughs> Got to learn how to bring that ball up the court. Not learn, but, you know, get used to be comfortable doing it and Amari's doing an amazing job I just still got to talk about her she came off an ACL injury you know just last mm -hmm. season in high school and so for to be able to step up to that role um, I admire her a ton we'll be good I was like spread, spread across the board with the amount of guards that we have and the help from our bigs you know <laughs> I don't know if you saw but we're mocking uh Lauren Gusson, you know, like PG Lauren when she's getting that fast break. <laughs> like, yep, she went all the way. That's yeah. awesome. So it's not only us that's getting the board handling in, it's, it's everyone across the board. <laughs> Are you more comfortable bringing the ball up the court or doing the hako? Oh, hako, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a fair question. If you can do both at the same time, that'd be really impressive. That's the next level. Okay, big road trip. You're going to play Missouri State. This is a team that over time has gone to five Sweet 16s. Like, they go to the tourney. They're a tough team. You've uh, played them, I, I believe, uh, recently, last couple of years. And then Nevada the next day, it's like less than 24 hours, two games. What will it take to come away with a couple of victories in Missouri? I'm um, just treated like every other game. You know, it doesn't matter if they you know, care about rankings. Amber always says grab them by the horns. <laughs> and so, you know, when you see a fight come, you don't, you don't back away. You, you go towards it. Um, you know, the coaches always have a great scout, so we'll always be prepared. I'll practice boys. If we can beat them, then we can beat anybody. They're a good bunch. And so we'll be good. Two more games before Big 12 play begins. Let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma to uh, heal up, you know, <laughs> and hopefully that, that uh, closes up real quick. How, by the way, are the staples still in? They're still in. Yeah, my hair's hiding it. <laughs> <laughs>
How long wow. did it stay in? That's wild. For like another eight days. Yeah. Mm. You're going to play with staples. Play with hand. staples, yeah. yeah. It's like one like starts coming out during the game and just pat it back down. Like, <laughs> Listen, if you, go, if you go nuts, you go off again, maybe you should just leave them in there for the duration. <laughs> okay. That's Lucky wild. staples. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, don't go, go off in the metal detector at the uh, airport. Like, oh I actually have eight staples. I need to go over here. Good luck in Missouri. Good luck, Thanks. Okay.